Hello, I'm Paul Beckwith, and of course this is uh, Shackleton the Explorer. And uh, in this uh, video, I'm going to talk about a smorgasbord of climate topics. Uh, one of my main focuses will be on the Arctic sea ice and the lack of uh, sea ice growth um, since we reached the minimum of sea ice extent in mid-September, the ice has kind of refused to grow as it normally would in previous years throughout October. Um, and it's specifically in areas um, like the, um, the Eastern Siberian Arctic Shelf and some adjacent uh, continental shells. Um, and of course, on the continental shells, the water is fairly shallow, and there's at the, an Atlantification process occurring in the Arctic, whereby warm water that is deeper down is coming into the Arctic Basin um, from the uh, Atlantic Ocean, specifically, and this water is um, it, it's warming up the uh, the whole region so that when the fall comes after the sea ice minimum, the ice is not reforming in that region. And this is extremely serious because the ice is melting out in these regions earlier uh, than it would normally do by, you know, a month or even longer. And now the ice is taking longer to even form back in those regions, and those regions have a lot of methane hydrates on the seafloor. And, uh, you know, if the water temperature is much, much higher, and it's actually as high as five degrees warmer than normal in these regions, and these methane hydrates start to thaw out. So there was a Russian um, expedition in that region, and they reported just recently that that in fact is the case. There's lots of methane hydrates sort of bubbling out of that region. So I'm gonna talk about those, but there's lots of other topics as well. Um, a book I'm just reading right now is by Mark Linus. So he wrote uh, a new book called Six Degrees of Climate Emergency. Okay, he had a previous book um, called you know, it's just called Six Degrees in 2007, where he talked about the climate effects that we could expect for, you know, one degree above pre-industrial, two degrees, three degrees, and so on. Um, so that was in 2007. He's also written some other books, um, you know, other various books. has won lots of prizes and stuff. So uh, I'm really looking forward to it. Here's the back. You know, one degree, today's world, Australia flame, rain at the North Pole, two degrees, three degrees, four, five, and six. Okay, and, and uh, you know, it's, I'm really looking forward to reading this. It's going to be quite, quite a good book. I, I'm, right now, I'm a little bit um, addicted to Stephen King novels. Uh, first one I read was Under the Dome. And then I read The Stand, which many consider to be his best work. And then um, I've also read, uh, the third one I read is, is Tommy Knockers, which is, which is an, excellent, um, an excellent story. And now, actually since then, I've been reading a book called, by Stephen King. It's called On Writing, you know, how to actually write. So who knows, maybe I'll start writing some, some uh, climate uh, horrors, basically, and uh, I'm not sure, I mean, it wouldn't, you know, it's sort of, it could be a combination non-fiction slash fiction, you know, there could be a fiction story woven in, and then the science will be, you know, the horror, the present horrors uh, that we can expect from abrupt climate change. But anyway, let's get to my videos. Um, let's get to my videos. Let's get to the computer screen. And uh, let's talk about uh, a smorgasbord of uh, things that are happening now. 
including the U.S. election. So we're still waiting for the um, official uh, calls on the results. Many people are sort of wondering, well, why don't they call it? It's pretty obvious that the Democrats are going to have, have, have enough uh, electoral seats. But, you know, at least there's not a lot of bloodshed or, you know, unrest uh, going on right now. Um, and they're just counting votes. So just let them count votes. And, uh, you know, anybody can go on the web and look at the numbers and you know, know how many votes are left and where the lead is and know that the Democrats are getting way more mail-in votes because Trump told his people, you know, vote on election day, don't wait for mail-in votes. And then he's going, you know, sitting in, in his White House quite isolated, you know, and uh, losing all kinds of support and getting crazier and, and crazier, unfortunately. But, you know, it's, uh, you know, maybe he'll snap and he'll have to be just removed from the, the White House. Anyway, um, you know, before the transition in January. So he's sitting there watching his Fox News and even they're turning against him. So I wrote a little poem. It was the night before U.S. elections went all through the lands. Many people were stirring. And you can go on to my blog, paulbeckwith.net, and have a check it out. And, uh, you know, it's a sanitized version. I actually had a, a line here. Donald Trump had a grimace he held tight in his teeth, and the anger and tension encircled his head like a wreath. He had an orange face and an enormous round belly that shook when he ranted like a bowl full of smellies. Now, this was actually that shook when he farted in a room full farted out a room full of smellies but I sanitized it and left uh, left smellies in there so it doesn't quite make sense but anyway have a look at this this is my poem which I wrote on election day and uh, you know I'm getting some rave reviews and also some groans from people okay so please uh, remember to donate to my PayPal to support all of my uh, climate uh, efforts to 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 bring the latest and and not so greatest or greatest science on uh, abrupt climate change, which is my primary focus. But I also talk a lot about different world events. Or you you know you can go directly to my YouTube channel, and um, I actually filmed this video a few days ago, three days ago, in a snowstorm, and. Uh, Today, we hit almost 20 degrees Celsius in Ottawa, so b below zero a few days ago, snowstorm, and, uh, you know, balmy weather today, and uh, I'm making use of the, the weather. Uh, a couple of days ago, after it warmed up, I raked tremendous numbers of leaves um, from the front of my house. And uh, I have a watch which tells me how many steps I take. And I actually did 20,000 steps on my front lawn, <laughs> you know, a few, a few days ago doing the raking. And then it, uh, you know, today I was working on the roof all day. Um, I've had, I have leaks on a couple of flat roofs and I've been replacing them. And... Uh, I I actually the the watch tells me I did 15 steps today which was indoors but more surprisingly 75 uh floors I I I walked up 75 the equivalent of 75 uh stories um in my efforts you know a lot of it carrying uh you know large uh, amounts of roofing material etc so good exercise. So if I'm a bit tired, um, you know, from in this video, you know, and, uh, you know, miss, misspeak a bit, then I can use that as a, a reason. So anyway, this is my YouTube channel. Uh, please uh, make sure you check it out. This is a kind of a cute video here. Okay, so um, Facebook, uh, always posting lots of stuff on Facebook, you know, philosophical uh, climate. I'll talk about the insanely warm Arctic Ocean waters. Uh, Isaac Asimov about a cult of ignorance, and Carl Sagan's written some interesting stuff. Uh, you know, also uh, you know with uh, foreshadowing what's what we're seeing in today's times. 
I don't know if you remember my video from a few years ago on a ski lift where I was talking about the death of science, you know, in the, U in the U.S. specifically, but also in the world. Okay, so there's always lots of stuff here. And, uh, you know, follow me on Twitter at Paul H. Beckwith. You know, here's the question. Do we need to give our prospective leaders brain scans before, they're, before they gain power? So, you know, this is a brain scan of what a psychopath's brain looks like. There's a lot of, there's very little activity in the frontal lobe here. But one in a hundred people is a psychopath, as experts estimate. Um, so I talk a little bit about that, and this is Zach Labe, who was interviewed by Nick Breeze, a good friend of mine. Um, so check out his, that interview. Um, lots of methane hydrates are, are uh, bubbling in the Arctic, very concerning. This happens to be over the, I mentioned that I'm going to talk about the lack of the early thaw out of the eastern Siberian uh, Arctic Shelf, and um, also, uh, yeah, yeah, cat. Um, so, you know, lots of prob problems there, um, and the virus is taking off. You know, the, the, the U.S. number, case numbers jumped 18% yesterday. First time that, that 120,000 cases were reported in a single day. So I'll talk a lot about that. Um, if you go to the hashtag, if you search for Zach Labe's YouTube, um, Twitter feed, make sure you follow his site. Um, he's always got tremendous posts and great graphics on what's going on in the Arctic. So this is showing the sea ice thickness um, in October it's from 1979 to 2016 and how we're losing more and more sea ice uh, come October. Here's a view of uh, warming. Um, that, so this is this is the um, this is the October average temperature for 1991 to 2020 minus the average October temperature on the same day 1980 or, or on the same month 1981 to 2010. And you can see this is the area where we've been losing huge amounts of sea ice. So these temperature anomalies here over between these two averages time periods is you know as high as three three and a half degrees celsius so we're getting huge warming here and this is the area over the continental shelves where we have these uh, methane hydrates so this is this is becoming a huge problem um, scientists warning europe um, has had a number of talks they call it cop 25 and a half um, if you just Google scientists warning Europe, and Peter Wadhams gave a talk on uh, Thursday morning, um, and they're all recorded, and he was talking about the dangers in the Arctic of the methane coming up. And, uh, of course, the go-to place for the virus uh, mapping to see what's going on is the John Hopkins site, almost 10 million cases in the U.S., that's about 20% of the globe, we're reaching 50 million, 1.24 um, million deaths, 236,000 in the US. And, you know, the numbers are just going up and up and up. So I've done a number of videos on, on this sort of thing. Uh, this is a, the conversation is an excellent um, Australian publication, uh, Australian blog you know, it uses a lot of academics. It's very rigorous, academic rigor, journalist FLIR. And they had an article about the Earth passing the 1.5 limit by 2024. But then, you know, in this major report, there's a report called United in Science. You can just Google the title. There's lots of good plots. There's, a, there's some great overviews of, of uh, you know, climate um, change, what's causing it how bad it is, et cetera, et cetera. I highly recommend that you have a look at that report called United in Science. I might do a separate video covering it. You know, it's by a whole bunch of different science agencies, okay? Uh, but it's talking about we're reaching these, these, these points of no return. And next I'll talk about this thing. Imagine, if you will, a world run by psychopaths. So tune in for part two. Thanks for listening.